Time to continue the Teach Thought Reflective Teacher 30-day blog that I'm doing a vlog of challenge. Today is, well, today's day nine, but this is day seven. I'm catching up, I'm catching up. Uh, day seven, my most inspirational colleague and why. Uh, this one, at first I was kind of uncomfortable because I was like, oh man, I still work with these people. One, like, teaches right next to me. They're going to be all like, ah, and then, ah. And I was like, no, I should do this. Because um, the few times that I've been lucky enough to have a former student, like, drop me a line or give me a call and say, like, hey, I really appreciate what you did for me. Like, that was really odd. Like, that is such an amazing feeling as an educator that we don't get very often. Like, we don't usually get to see the, the fruits of our labor, uh, that very much uh, later on down the road they've usually graduated and moved on and you know I'm not going to fault them for that you know I'm going to be oh you have to call me later and tell me what a good job I did because it makes me feel nice so I'm just going to go I'm just going to go after it uh, most inspirational colleague and why before I do that though I do want to say that really I mean and this is not just like some kind of like PC backpedaling like honestly all my colleagues are amazing. I really love Mount Vernon City Schools. It's it's such an incredible district to be in. Uh, really, like, my entire staff at the high school is a ton of fun. They're all really driven. They honestly care about their students, and the majority of them put them way before, like, anything else in their lives. Uh, they're all wicked smart, like, really intelligent people, really just hardworking, industrious. I mean, it's just, it's such an awesome place to be. It's such a fun place to work and there's such good camaraderie with the staff. I mean, I, I absolutely love working in this district. Uh, one of the things uh, with teaching, I use a very, uh, very traditional approach to teaching in that, not like in like actual instruction methods, but in that I just steal like pieces of from everyone. So there's components of all my colleagues in something or other that I do. Uh, well, one thing that comes to mind just off the top of my head is um. But one of my neighbors, Jan Quinn, used to always say, like, we'd be talking in the hallway because I used to have a room right next to her, and she's one of our senior social teachers, awesome lady, and she would always, like, smile when the bell rang and say, oh, see ya, gotta go stamp out ignorance. And that's such a great approach to thinking about what we do because that literally is what I do on a daily basis. I just combat scientific ignorance and replace it with scientific understanding and knowledge. And, oh, I love that. It's such a, such a great way to think about it. But the two, and I couldn't do one, so I'm going to do two. The two colleagues that are most influential, uh, Bonnie Schutte and Anne-Marie Croswell. And it says I have to tell them why, so here comes why. Uh, both of them work tirelessly for their students at, at the neglect of, I'm sure, many, many facets of their personal life. Uh, probably at the benefit of... Uh, well, no, probably at the detriment to their health in some ways, just the stress and the long hours and the, like, coming in on the weekend and working, like, from home and just, like, during, during all year, like, there's just, they're always in teacher mode. They're always thinking, like, oh, this is how I could bring this into my classroom. This is something I could do better in my classroom. This is how I can make this activity better. This is how I can reach students better. Uh, Anne Marie, I've known for a really long time. Well, actually, both of them, because Bonnie Schutte was my high school AP bio teacher. Um, I'll, I'll start with Anne Marie, I guess. Uh, she teaches fifth grade. She's over at Wigan Street. If you have the chance to get your kids in her classroom or her teaching partner, Chrissy Grandstaff, both of them absolutely amazing professionals. Uh, Anne Marie really encapsulates, I think, the heart of a teacher. Just so, like, there is nothing she wouldn't do for her students. Nothing like, including like, she was like picking them up and driving them into school because they couldn't get in there early enough to like help them like learn and help them catch up, help them do like standardized test prep so they can crush the OG, the OAA. Here's the crazy thing with Anne Marie. She is excited when OAA time comes because she knows her kids are going to destroy that test. And every year, her kids just destroy that test. She's got like 97 and higher percent passing rate for the last like four years straight. It's just, it's crazy. And the, the big thing that she like really believes, like the, the two parts of like 
what is like makes her so successful is loving her kids. She she always tells me like, oh, you just you just gotta love them. Just no, oh, no, I know they're they're screwed up. They've got this and that. You just gotta love them. Just unconditionally, you just gotta love them. And you have to believe like you not just say you believe, but you have to believe in your heart of hearts that they really can do amazing things and that they will do amazing things with you this year. And not just like say it like, like there's just, there's something about that positive attitude and believing. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. We always learn about how if you think this kid's crappy, then they'll end up being crappy because you made them that way with your self-fulfilling prophecy. And it just, it works the other way, but you have to, you have to just know it deep down that they will succeed and they will be awesome. And, and I mean, she's got great methodology and great, and she works like on all that stuff too. But those two things, I think if you have those two things, then Everything else will come because you will work tirelessly until you have just the best teaching practice you could have. Uh, Bonnie Schutte, uh, she's my neighbor. We have a common prep room where she keeps like all kinds of lab stuff. She'll probably think I'm just buttering her up so I can borrow more of her sweet lab stuff. But she, as far as like teaching pedagogy and methodology, she is probably one of the best teachers I've ever seen. I had her myself in AP Bio. I work next to her, I watch her reach freshmen, I watch her like go down and go after at risk kids and just bring them up and show them that science can be fun, that science can be engaging, that science can be something they can do. She she's like almost like at the point where she could retire now. I think like three more years and she could retire. And she's not sitting stagnant. She's not like, Well, I have my system and these are the activities that I've cultivated over the years. Like she's constantly like renovating what she does she's constantly renewing what she does she's constantly remaking what she does and like it's it's just awesome to see someone work so hard for so long in their teaching career and just to see like the rewards from that to see the tangible benefits in her classroom because I mean like the kids what they do with science in her classroom is just awesome all around the board and so that again, all my colleagues are awesome, but those two in particular, I've probably stolen the most of what is in my heart and what is in my classroom from those two. So that was day seven. You know, what do you guys think? Even even the non-teachers out there, who was who was the teacher, college professor, mentor? Like, who was the one that really, you know? got to you and just showed you like you could be so much better with this and really you know helped inspire you go ahead uh, put those down in the comments or maybe if you're feeling frisky video response could be fun